The scenery is as fine as ever along Scotland's west coast, with its long sea lochs ringed by pretty villages and sprinkled with sea farms, producing internationally renowned salmon. But beneath the water, trouble lurks, a plague of sea lice infesting farmed salmon and their wild cousins as they swim past between river and ocean. In recent decades, fish farming has turned salmon from luxury treat to mass market food. But all is not well in the fish farms dotted along Scotland's western coast and islands. The scourge of sea lice is hurting production and raising serious questions about the industry's ambitious expansion plans. These sea lice are a natural parasite that latch onto salmon or trout and feed off their mucus, skin or blood. Too many on a fish can stunt its growth or kill it, and they are becoming increasingly resistant to the chemical treatments fish farms use to control them. The result is lower production, which is helping send international salmon prices soaring. High-end seafood business Loch Fine Oysters relies on salmon for about two-thirds of turnover, and it's seen the price it pays for the fish climb around 40% since last year. The risk is that people just don't buy salmon and they switch over to other luxury items such as prosciutto, parma ham, uh, sea bass, even cod line. Um, salmon could end up just being too expensive. There's only so far you can push the price on a menu or on a retail shelf before people think no, that's, just, that's just a bit too much now for salmon. Particularly when you look at the last couple of decades when salmon has become more commoditised. Fish farmers are fighting back. Sector leader Marine Harvest is introducing expensive new technologies like the thermalizer, a vessel that pumps salmon through heated water to make the lice let go. Another approach is to cultivate different species of fish alongside the salmon. This fish farm in Loch Linney has introduced two kinds of cleaner fish, ballon wrasse and lump suckers, that eat the lice right off the salmon's backs. Staff say the cleaner fish have reduced the need for chemical treatments, which environmental campaigners say are potentially hazardous. They're eating the lice and killing them, whereas you do a treatment, all you're doing really is knocking the lice off. Uh, depends what treatment you're doing. And then you're just releasing them back into the system within a certain amount of time. They're back on the salmon again. So this way, with cleaner fish uh, in the cages, good for the customer and good for us. Ben Hadfield, Marine Harvest's managing director in Scotland, says the new approaches have brought sea lice levels down to a sixth of what they were last year. Though he admits it's far too early to say the industry's problems are solved. I don't believe in, in any sense that the job is done. There's still a lot of work to do. Sea lice levels are even now too high. They've been reduced dramatically and production has improved uh, markedly as a result of that but we need to keep developing these technologies and get the levels down to, 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 to further low levels. Others are deeply worried about the impact of sea lice infestation on wild salmon populations as the fish farming industry pursues a vision of doubling its contribution to the Scottish economy to £3.6 billion by 2030. Salmon and sea trout could be wiped out in some west coast rivers, says wild fisheries expert Craig McIntyre. The prospect of the aquaculture industry doubling in size by 2030, which is the Scottish Government's intention, frankly terrifies me. The aquaculture industry as it currently stands doesn't have the ammunition necessary to control sea lice. They can't control sea lice at the moment, so doubling the size of the industry will simply double the size of the problem. The pressure is now on fish farmers to show that they can manage their sea lice problem. In Scotland's sea lochs, the battle continues. Muir Dickey, Financial Times, West Coast of Scotland.